Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to a new video on the YouTube channel of Darts Actueel. Today, we are honored with, uh, yet again, an, uh, a very special guest. It's uh, the head of media of PDC Europe. It's Filip Brzezinski. Filip, um, yeah, welcome in, the, in our little, little interview. Um, how are you doing today? Yeah, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for having me, Pim. Pleasure, pleasure to be here. Uh, still a bit tired, actually, from uh, from the last uh, two weeks in Niederhausen. It's not been uh, it's not been very long since then, and uh, it's been busy busy two weeks. But uh, apart from that, doing just fine. Hope yourself too. Well, that's uh, that's good, dear. And uh, understandably that you're busy. We're going to talk about the Super League or and uh, the other event in Niederhausen, the Pro Tour, obviously. Um, but let's start with the German Super League. Um, I mean. According to us, it was a it was a great success again with a lot, lots of tension in the later rounds uh, in the tournaments. Um, how are you looking back on on the tournament on the, on the Super League? Oh, it's been from a from a sportive standpoint, we've been absolutely delighted with it. I think uh, mm -hmm. that the format change worked really well. You know, for this year going from sixty to twenty four players, I think the players that uh, that got the wild card that we nominated they did a brilliant job. You know, even. Even some of the players, you know, where maybe prior to the event, a couple of people would have said, "Oh, why is he in, and why not him?" And you know, you know how how these things work. Whenever you give out wild cards, there are a lot of different opinions, and a lot of uh, yeah, a lot of people have have a lot of things to say. Um, but I think they absolutely justified um, the fact that that we gave them the wild card, and uh, they look great. A lot of the young lads as well. When you look at Nico Springer, when you look at Marcel Gerdon, who were given their debut. It's it's been brilliant from from that standpoint, and obviously when you've got a um, yeah a knockout stage like we had with so many close matches, you know you can't buy this. It's uh, it's very special, as you well know. Um, that's the great thing about darts. You know, it's a great sport anyway. But when it's getting close and uh, the nerves are coming in, then it's just a, a fantastic sport to watch. And uh, so we've had great days, really. Yeah, exactly. I mean, there were some some fine matches indeed, and uh, just like you said, there it was a great combination between um, the expertise of of the, the you know the more experienced players and 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 great talent of Germany. Um, you already noticed the the change of format in the, the Super League from from sixteen last years to to twenty four players now with uh, you know yeah kind of the, the qualifying round before. Um, is it something? Um, also with those wild cards that is also um, in the same way being organized in in future years um, um, like the former of the super league yeah that is that is still a bit up for debate you know i mean in an ideal world when we're going back to normal we would like to get it back to a system where we're having um like five of these round robin days like like we used to have in the original format because that's that's the reason why the Super League was originally created because we wanted to give the top German players a lot of, you know, a lot of practice, a lot of match practice um, playing against all the other guys. That is what was lacking really, and that is what we what we want to do. This is probably what we're going to go back to as well. Mm -hmm. um, but in the circumstances um, that we've been in this year and last year as well, um, the format change just it was inevitable. Really, we had, we had to do it this way, and and I think uh, the way it turned out. Um, we're all very, very happy the way it uh, the way it went in the end. I think uh, you could you could be very happy. You need um, yeah, you, you are already uh, admitting that you want to go uh, um, to the to the sixteen player format again. Um, does that mean that the sixteen players who got into the the final event now will also play in in next year's uh, Super League, or is it also just under uh, in under debate? Well, I said we want to go back to to playing this round robin format where, where they're going to meet each other a lot of times. Whether that's going to be sixteen players or a couple of players more, we will okay. see about that. But uh, one thing is for sure: I mean, we, we we cannot say now that the sixteen players that made it through to the main round, we we cannot go back now and say, "Well, listen, guys, well done," but uh, you're, you're you're not in next year. So that's that's not what's going to happen. I think they they proved themselves. Um, obviously, there were a couple of big names that went out in the in the preliminary round. Mm -hmm. When you think of Kevin Murray when you think of Robert Marianovic, which for me was the biggest surprise, really. Um, so obviously we were now looking at a, at a solution where we can give everyone a good chance to, to make it into the Super League again, um, whether that's going to be 16 players in the future or 20 or 24. We'll see about that. We'll have a, a long, hard look at things and uh, try to, to make the best decision for, for everyone really going forward. Well, we're definitely looking forward to to next year's German uh, Super League for sure. Um, I mean, the Super League had is uh, had its success already in Germany. The the whole format and whole system, is it something would 
we could be see uh, we could be seeing being organized in other countries as well like um, i mean the netherlands is, might be too big but uh, for example belgium might be a very good example of of talent and some players who who have expertise and yeah is it something that could be organized in other countries as well Yes, yeah, it's, it's well possible. I think it's a you know it's a good way to give to give good players in the country match practice against the against the other good guys there because as you well know that that's something that money can't buy and and mm -hmm. if you practice on your own that's that's all well and good but you've got to sort of get into competition with with the other good guys so it's it's yeah it's well possible that other countries might might do that as well. I think I've recently heard that uh, some some Italian guys are, are thinking about doing something like that in Italy. So. Um, you know, I think the way it, it went here in Germany, and I think it, how it how it went uh, this year in Niederhausen was, you know, was really good uh, good promotion for the for the format and for the way to do to do it like this. And um, yeah, I think it's a it's a good possibility, as you said, for the countries that could still be considered the the lesser countries. Obviously, like in the Netherlands, you've got so much talent and you've got so many great players that this is probably something that is not needed. As you said, Belgium, Italy. Um, maybe maybe switzerland or something that, that could certainly be a place where uh, something like that could, could be put into place yeah okay but is it also something that the pdc pdc europe could get behind and also organize some stream format or not even a stream format, but at least something linked to pdc europe or you don't see that happening yet uh, that's obviously uh, something that we have to look at in, in, in detail when when that comes up. Um, it's certainly something that ideally happens uh, organically in, in in a certain country. I mean, in Germany, that happened because uh, obviously we've got our headquarters here in Germany. Uh, majority of the of the guys behind PDC are, are German, so this is how that happened historically. Let's say. Um, but yeah, that's that's certainly a possibility. I mean, it's it's in all in all of our interest to make sure that uh, we've got a lot of good players in different countries to to make sure that uh, our great sport gets uh, yeah gets a lot of promotion in these countries as well. And and as you well know, you need a yeah you need someone to to pull the wagon, you know, to uh, to be the name, to be the flag bearer, sort of. Um, and then the media in these countries they're going to realize, oh well, we, we've got someone who's doing really really well in darts and he's playing in front of three and a half four thousand people at the, at the end of the year in, in london at ali pelly then certainly uh, the media in, in other countries are going to take notice and if a super league format is uh, yeah is a way to go about things then uh, that could certainly be a possibility okay well we'll see how the, the future develops itself um yeah let's go to the next tournament in niedernhausen um you are also a big part of it a uh, part of uh, the pc europe team obviously uh, interviewing the players um, after they've won their their pro tour event, um, yeah, how are you, how are you looking back at that? Uh, um, yeah, the first pro tour event in uh, uh, Germany now uh, this year. Yeah, it's been. Uh, I think we've seen some crazy, crazy darts. I mean, when you look at things average wise, I mean, we get this more and more often. But when you look look at what, for example, Jose de Sosa did or or, or Dimitri Vandenberg hitting those 108s, 110s, sometimes 140, 117, it's ridiculous. It, it is ridiculous standard. Um, it's been a bit of a shame, obviously, that uh, a couple of the big names decided not to come over to Germany because of the situation with. Uh, having to quarantine when they when they go back because these are the rules at the moment. So um, yeah, a couple of the big names obviously missing like Go and Prize, Peter Rye. It would have been great to see them there. But nevertheless, I think we saw fun, you know fantastic games. We saw great winners. Um, I mean, maiden pro tour victories for for Dirk van Dijvenborde for uh, Dimitri Vandenberg. It's crazy when you think about it. It's Dimitri's first pro tour title. You know, it's already two World Youth Championships, the World Match Play. Well, that just shows you how difficult it is to win one of these, and um, yeah, all in all, that as well was a was a great success, really. Yeah, I think it was indeed a great success. Um, although a lot of uh, um, uh, darts players, um, you, yeah, you withdrew from the event. Um, like we or you guys needed uh, 20, 26 substitutes and uh, one more on the, on the final day. Um, is that something you had contact with uh, um, the PDC? Um, like was cancelling the event ever in mind of you guys because there were so many um, withdrawals? No, 
to be honest, those withdrawals, they came rather short term because mm -hmm. these, these new rules had been put into place like only a couple of days before before the event was was supposed to take place. So um, cancelling it was was not an option then because that would have been uh, that wouldn't have worked. There was no way to say, all right, listen, we're not going to go to Germany. We're going to have a spontaneous decision and go to MK or go to Bolton or, or whatever. That, yeah. that wasn't a possibility. So due to the short notice of things, um, that that wasn't possible would they have or would the pdc have said okay let's do it in the uk if we had if we had had like two weeks um you know between the between the new rules and and the event i don't know i, I don't think so because it's really at heart of the pdc to to put a couple of pro tour events on the continent as well yeah because at the moment it's very very difficult for you know for the dutch players for the german players for everyone from the continent to make it over to the UK. Um, and then there's a, a bit of traveling to be done for the UK guys as well. I, th I think that that's only fair. So this is something that the PDC looks at to sort of uh, yeah keep things in, in balance there. Mm -hmm. Makes sense, uh, Indeed. And we've seen um, a, a pro tour uh, um, like events in the Netherlands ca being canceled last year in, in Leovarde. Um, and also now this this one in Germany, of course. Um, is there a possibility? Is there a possibility we will see um, more events, more players' championship events um, outside the UK in the in the like later this year, in the second half of this year? Um, to be honest, I, I couldn't I couldn't tell you yes, and I couldn't tell you no. Uh, we've got the the two that ha that have just been announced: one in Bolton, one in uh, one in MK. Mm -hmm. What happens after that? Um, we'll have to see about that. I mean, the as you well know, the calendar uh, and the space we've got in the calendar is going to be very very tight towards the end because there are a lot of big events, big TV events coming up. Um, ideally, in an ideal world, a couple of European tour event events as well, hopefully. Um, and so this is going to be a uh, yeah a difficult a difficult thing to do to manage, um, but yeah we're uh, we're all in great hands with uh, with Matt Porter from PDC planning planning things and on our side obviously obviously Torsten Brock who's our head of production who is uh, having a look at at everything at the minute you know where could a European tour event be possible because there are different different options um, opening up in, in different countries different rules it's all very very complicated and difficult at the minute. Um, Why well, are you already talking about it? The Euro Tour, I mean, the pride of PDC Europe. Um, we all uh, are hoping uh, to to get those tournaments back. Um, yeah, I mean, like you're all already saying, you are already busy with like a possible schedule of a European tour. Um, like, is there already a, a yes or a no? You could say like, oh, there will be a European tour at later of this year, or you just don't know yet. I wish I could. I wish I could say yes. We all, obviously we all hope it's mm. going to happen. Yeah. Um, as I said, there are difficult, uh, different, different options in different countries. We are at the minute quite positive that as the year goes on, you know, as we go down the road, that there are going to be a couple of European tour events. Where they're going to be, how many people are going to be there, I I can't tell you that at the minute. How many European tour events are we going to have? I can't I can't say that. Everything I can say is that we're working tirelessly to to make things possible to to find to find solutions. And in an ideal world have fans with us again as well because obviously we had the great news that um, as things look right now in the UK we're going to have fans um, on the five last days of the of the Premier League this year. It's going to be fantastic to see fans back. And as you well know, I mean, you've been to the European on, on, to the European tour events a couple of times. Fans are just the lifeblood of these events. You know, this is sort of the the connection between the floor events and the major events. This is where where the guys, the players, can experience the the big crowds because yeah, it's, we we get the crowds of three four thousand people as well, which is uh, which is world championship uh, mm -hmm. um, size really. So um, well, we we all want the crowds back. Um, I mean, in the UK, like you're saying, the crowds are already uh, um, allowed, at least in, in the future t tournaments of the Premier League. Would organizing a Euro Tour in the UK, in England, Wales, um, Scotland, ever be a possibility for PDC Europe? <laughs> that's that's a good question, actually. <laughs> right now, right now, I, I'd probably say no because they've they've got their tournaments there. They've, they've they will have the couple of Premier League days. They will have hopefully the World Match Play with fans, the Grand Slam with fans, everything that's coming up there. Hopefully, we're going to have a uh, a packed Ali Pelli towards the end of the year, or at least. 
something like uh, half of the capacity, something like that. Um, right now, I'd probably say no to, to, to a European tour event in the UK. Um, we would like to make it work on the continent where we usually are, whether that is going to be in Germany, in the Netherlands, in Belgium, Austria, possibly. Um, we hope that we're going to make something possible, yeah. Yeah, and uh, Gibraltar uh, might be one of the first ones to, to actually get an event. But I mean, you already said you're, you're not going to um, open on, uh, on, on, on certain specific countries. Um, at least, <laughs> talking about a specific country now, um, like Barry Hearn, he, he tweeted uh, last month, there would be big news for darts in Iceland. Um, well, we've spoken to our Iceland uh, sources as well, like the, the players over there. They don't know of anything happening in Iceland. Um, we do know there is quite some development in, in darts in Iceland. Um, um, at first we thought it might be a World Series event because it's also a, a little more safer in Iceland. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's only one thing left now and for us, and that's that's a Euro Tour event in uh, in Iceland or on Iceland. Um, are you guys busy with, with the, the, the country of Iceland or do you know anything of it? Well, let me let me quickly call Iceland. <laughs> well, to be, to be honest with you, that is uh, that will be news to me. Um, right. What the PDC has got has got planned there, what they've got in store there, I, I don't know. I can't tell you. Um, but you know, we, we'll see if 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 ever we're going to Iceland, then uh, let's get the you know the, the warm clothes on and uh, hopefully uh, see some some good darts that has got to warm us up. But uh, now, as of right now, I don't know don't know anything about Iceland. Interesting. Yeah, we'll, we'll we'll see how it works out with the the statement of Barry Hearn. Maybe he just uh, meant a nice holiday for himself or his family or anything. <laughs> that that the big news was. But all right. Um, yeah, Barry let's talk. Knows about... best, mate. Barry knows best. <laughs> yeah. yeah, true, true. Let's talk about the future of uh, PDC Europe. Obviously, you've organized Euro Tour events, uh, Pro Tour events, uh, the Super League already. Um, like, are are there any other? Uh, formats or tournaments we can expect from from PDC Europe in the future. I mean, uh, like the East, an Eastern European tour is something that is talked about, and I know you you guys are not really fond of uh, organizing it yet. Um, but can, yeah, my question is, can we also um, expect something totally different and, and totally new from from PDC Europe? Um, you know, that's obviously a, a case of, you know, or a question of manpower as well. I mean, to, to organize an Eastern European tour um, with the core team that we've got, we can obviously, what we can do is, is, is help build up structures that can then be sort of done internally there. That, that can, can always be a, po a possibility, just like I, like I said earlier about, about Italy. Um, you know, what, was, what we're still going to have, um, or what we're still going to look at is, um, you know, sort of broaden, broaden the European tour. I mean, as you, as you well know, the, the majority of European tour events, they are still in Germany, if mm -hmm. everything is, is, is back to normal. Um, and there are a lot of, you know, a couple of countries that, uh, we, you know, we've, we've got an eye on, we want to go in, in, in the future. I think with, obviously, Jose de Sosa doing as well as he's doing right now, we'll have to, we'll have to look at, uh, at Portugal at some point, you know, whether, mm -hmm. Or how Portugal is going to react to to have a you know a major winner, someone who from his potential I think could be challenging for world titles in the future. Um, so there are a lot of a lot of countries where that we've not yet been to that uh, we're certainly going to to have a look at with European tour events and uh, um, yeah, sort of broaden broaden the map in in that regard. Yeah, it's interesting uh, you're saying it because it was my my next question indeed. Um, I mean, the, the PDC Europe and especially your, the European tours are really great in, in globalizing the darts uh, uh, com community and, and sport. Um, we've seen Hungary on the schedule already being canceled, uh, unfortunately. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, would I be right to say Hungary or even Poland would be uh, like one of those countries you, you, you guys are having an eye on right now? Surely, I mean, as I said, it's also always um, a question of, uh, you know, where are the good players as well? Where is, uh, you know, a media interest in things? Where are people looking at the darts thinking, oh, we've got a, a guy who's, who's doing really well? Um, and yeah, we've got, obviously, in Poland, uh, Krzysztof Rotajski, uh, Krzysztof Kaczuk, who was, who was doing really well at the last Super Series as well. So they've got a, a couple of names there as well who can, who can do good things. Um, Hungary is one of the places, you know, where we don't really have... Uh, a big name where we don't really have yet have a, a big player but uh, there's a lot of interest in Hungary I mean as, as, as you well know we've got a, 
uh, a couple of uh, Hungarian colleagues as well in, in PDC Europe. Yeah, media uh, coverage Daniel as well. Of of and, 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 and her husband, uh, Josef, uh, who, who are from there. And, and there, there is a dance community that is really mad for the dance. And uh, they're doing a great job. They're, 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 they're organizing things, you know, uh, the European tour there, the uh, an exhibition, a big one. So, and, and, and we, we'll look at how things go there. Hopefully, uh, in, in the future, we can uh, sort of manifest those events and, and, and can stage them. And then we, we see how, how people in, in Hungary are going to react to it. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm very glad you're still uh, with PDC Europe, um, trying to broaden the dart sport and, and, and going to countries that have not seen a, a darts event uh, yet. I, I want to thank you, uh, Philip, for this, uh, this little interview. And um, yeah, I wish you all the best with PDC Europe and um, all your, your other work in, in, the, in the darts. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Pim. It's been been my pleasure, and uh, hopefully see you soon at uh, at a European Tour event uh, down the road.